Hello and welcome to another installment of the Glyph Screencast series for YSDN 3003 typeface design. This video is going to be a continuation of the uh, first fitting video, video 10, which was uh, which demonstrated fitting the uh, source serif typeface. So I didn't show you in that video how to do a sans serif or how to go about fitting the sans. So I'm going to make a very short video that is indeed on fitting sans serif and it's going to allow you uh, to just see the differences so this won't take very long also I want to talk about fitting lighter and bolder masters okay now this was the same kind of file that you saw me working on before I'm going to minimize it right now and I'm going to go over to the sans you saw me open this file now I'm just going to do the the very basic things I won't do the adhesion workflow process but I am going to tack something onto the end of this one that I didn't show you in the other one, so just be aware of that. So, same idea though, I'm going to go through the process again. Now, here's the difference with a sans serif. I don't have serifs. Well, yes, that's obvious. However, the difference about fitting a sans serif is that you don't have the same values that you might have been used to, uh, that, that we have gotten used to in the serif file. So, in order for me to fit a sans serif, I have to remember what I'm doing is I'm measuring the counter forms. I'm not worrying. I'm measuring the counter forms and I'm worrying about the space between the shapes and I don't care now about an influence of a serif in this case. So I have 225 as the counter width and the same principle is going to apply here where let's say I'm going to have 80 and 75 let's say roughly on either side of the end. And what I am trying to get is ha about half of the counter space, a little bit less than half of the counter value on either side. And right now that is pretty open. This gets to be pretty open actually. Okay. I think it should actually be more like this for now. One thing that you can do and that what I did to learn uh, how to fit typefaces, in fact how to draw, is I just opened up other font files and I looked at what they did. I looked at what do their values end up looking like, what do the curves look like, what does the math look like. You just learn by doing that, you sort of dissect other things. It's a great way to learn. So. This is one way of learning here. So that's pretty comfortable for a sans. In fact, you'll notice with a sans serif, you want that counter form to be a little bit uh, more like half of this counter space. So that value is gonna be a lot less than we saw in the serif type because we need more gravitational pull in those characters. Now, in these characters. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing here and I'm gonna do that trick that Herod talked about. Alright, now my O, I think that actually, you know, 50 is not bad. And, but one thing that I will say is that in this situation, feels like O is pulling a little bit away from the N, so I want it to be a bit tighter than that. And that's, that's getting pretty tight because of this double combo. So I'm going to try this, I'm going to try 45. You notice that I try to work with increments of 10 first, and then I'll start pulling in like odd numbers in, or like one or two units in. Uh, but it usually doesn't help you too much in fitting to start working with really ar arbitrary numbers. I try to keep it pretty even because it tends to work the best. If your proportions are good, your values shouldn't be that odd. In kerning, they definitely shouldn't be all uh, you shouldn't be doing like uh, odd numbers, really. It should be more set groups of five kind of thing. Okay, so same idea. I'm going to start plugging in new things in here. I can even test it like this, but that's not as helpful to me as this. Okay, so I'm going to add an I in here. Now the I looks different in the sans. It looks a bit tighter. I could give the I 50, or sorry, 85 on either side, just like the N. 
But look at how wide that becomes. That's massive. I really don't want that. So the eye has to get quite a bit less in a sans design. Something I like to do as well, so that I don't fumble around with the glyph, is I just leave it here. And notice how I just had to have my cursor on top of the glyph, and I can edit it. But it, so it, this allows me to look at everything in real time without messing things up. Okay, so I'm actually thinking that it needs to be tighter than that. And let's get our word. I think that that's too close. So I need to open that up. And actually, maybe we... Okay, that's a lot better. There we go. So the word helped us decide. I mean, we could get a word like, uh, yeah, like a double A or double I kind of situation. Some languages have double I's, um, like this. Anyways, but we won't worry about that at the moment. Okay, so then you just keep going through the same kind of cycle. You'll notice that letters like A, though, same idea as before. They're kind of odd. They don't get the same treatment. I could try the N. It works a little bit better here, but I still think that it feels a little funny because that curve cuts sh harder than this one does. So actually, I think it would be more like 75 or maybe 77. It actually feels better. And then on this side, it actually has to be less maybe than we expected. Yes, it does. Okay, and then of course, same idea. I'm testing this out. So, what can I make? Uh, and I haven't copied this over yet. I, by the way, I can do the same thing that you saw in the serif video. I can just enter those glyphs that I want to copy like that. So, there's a word. Um, I don't know. I'm having a hard time making up poetry for these ones, but there you go. So the same kind of process. Um, when it comes to working with the diagonal characters, which I didn't touch on in the, uh, which I didn't touch on in the serif video, is that I want to think. Let's copy this so that it, we can at least get this. I want those diagonal characters to be zero. But I might find that depending on the design, like right now, this looks too tight for this design. This might also be an indication that my fitting is a little too open right now. But what I could do is I could give my diagonals a value like that. And once again, you got to test that in a pattern to see how that works. Okay, I'm going to cut this video now, and I'm going to do another video talking about capitals and, and punctuation.